Hello and welcome, this is Agent XP, and welcome back to another Tiara Lee tutorial. Today we are going to be looking at two methods of opening doors, and the first of these involves placing multiple puzzle items to open one door, and the second setup involves looking at how to use a multi-switch setup to open multiple doors, similar to the setup seen in Palace Midas in the original Tomb Raider game. So we're going to start off with a fairly standard room. I've applied some texturing and lighting in order to give a bit of interest in the room so we're not just dealing with a bland, boring room. So we're going to start off by setting up a puzzle which involves placing four puzzle items in order to open a door. This is a very common thing that we tend to want to set up in the level editor. I'm going to start by opening my object panel and I'm going to click yes to ordering things alphabetically. This is a TRNG feature, it's not something you can do in the original editor and it's quite useful, however the object list is pretty similar in either version. So what we're going to want to do now is find a door. I'm going to click on the first door and I'm going to scroll through until I find one that I want to use and um, we're going to use this one, fairly standard looking door. So I'm going to place that on the map. So we've placed our door and now we want to find ourselves a puzzle hole item and now we can place these on the map and we're going to place four of them. So now we're going to rotate the room and rotate these so that they are facing the correct direction. Like so. There we go, rotate them until they face the wall. So now that we've placed our puzzle hole items on the map, we're going to want to set up the triggers for them. So click on the first puzzle hole, select the trigger menu, and we're going to select this drop down and set the trigger type to key and OK. And now we're going to want to look at these numbers at the bottom of the trigger menu. And what I normally do is click them all and set them all to off by default. So we can now just select the ones that we want. And for this puzzle hole, we're going to want to select one. And now we're going to go OK. And we're going to select the tile under the puzzle hole and place the trigger. Now select the second puzzle hole and repeat the process, set key. Turn all the code bits to off. And now we're going to want to select two and go OK. Place the trigger. Now select the third, set to key. Turn off all the OCBs and then select the third. Go OK. Place another trigger. And for the final one, we're going to want to select key once again. Turn off all the OCBs. But for this one, we're going to want to select the last two digits. And we're going to go OK and we're going to place the trigger. Now the reason that we selected both 4 and 5 for the last one is because what we essentially need is when Lara places all the puzzle items we need all the code bits to be set to on. Now the first puzzle hole set code bit 1 to on, the second one set code bit 2 to on, the third one set code bit 3 to on, and the final one set 4 and 5 to on. Now if we had had a fifth puzzle hole, you would have one OCB value on for each. And if you had three or two, you would need one to be set to on for the first puzzle hole, and then the remaining four to be set to on for the second. And this is basically so that once Lara places all the puzzle items, all the code bits are set to on for that given puzzle. So now we're going to want to select the door and we place a normal trigger for the door on each of the puzzle hole tiles, like so. And that is our puzzle setup complete. But before we go and test it, make sure that you place four of those puzzle items on the map. Otherwise you won't be able to see whether it's working or not. So let's find our puzzle item. It was puzzle item seven. There it is. So we're going to want to place four of those on the map, like so. 
Make sure you have Lara on your map also. And now we can go and output our level and test the setup. So now we are going to set up the multi-switch puzzle. For this we will need to place a couple of objects. So what I'm going to do is select the object list, I'm going to order it alphabetically. And this is something you can do in TRNG, it's not something you can do in the original Tomb Raider. But the process is still pretty much the same, you can open up your object list and find some doors. And we're going to scroll through until we find a door that we want to use. This is a good standard door. So I'm going to place my door. Now you should have your door adjacent to a portal, that way you can avoid the invisible box behind it, but we don't have another room through there, but for the sake of this tutorial it doesn't really matter. All we want to see is whether the door opens or not. So I'm going to place one the other side of the room also, rotate. And now we have two doors in our room. Now this setup will work with more than two doors, but I'm just going to do two for now to keep things fairly basic. And once you've understood this puzzle, it's relatively easy to add extra doors. So the next thing I'm going to want to do is to find a switch. And we can now scroll through and find ourselves the switches. And we want to find ourselves a normal looking lever switch. That's the going to be the easiest. Uh, we're going to place four of these. So place them on the map and rotate them so that they're next to the wall. As you can see if I turn on face edit there are some switch textures which match the lever switches. I always like to put a corresponding texture or object behind these because if they're just on a blank wall it looks a bit silly when Lara does the animation. It needs a uh, sort of track if that makes sense, in order to make it look like a plausible switch. So we've placed our four switches. So I will say before I start, you can do this puzzle with three switches, should you want to. You can also do it with five, but for the sake of this tutorial, I'm just using four. So now that we have all our objects placed, we are going to want to do some setups. The most important thing to note about this puzzle is the OCB values. So that's the object code bit values, OCB for short. So what we're going to want to do is similar to a normal setup, we're going to want to bring up our trigger menu and for the switch that we've just selected, we're going to want to select a switch trigger. If we look at the bottom of the menu, we will see these numbers and currently these are all pressed. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to unpress all of them because I find it easier to start with none of them pressed and then just press the ones you want to have selected. For the sake of this puzzle, when you're looking at the object code bits, you're going to want to forget that they're numbered. So the numbers on them do not mean anything, they just denote the position. So you have five of these, one, two, three, four, five. So think of them as being blank, they don't have numbers on them. So what is important with this setup is the position of these code bit switches. So what we're basically going to want to do is to select a different code bit combination for all of the switches. So for this one I'm going to select the following two and uh, we're going to press OK and this is part of the switch trigger. So now we're going to want to place the switch trigger like so. Now we're going to select the next switch, select switch for the trigger. And now we're going to want to turn all of the values off. On this one, we're going to select a different combination. So I'm going to do the first one, the third one, and the fifth one on this switch. And we're going to go OK. And we're going to place our switch trigger. We're going to do the same for this one. Select switch. 
but on this one we're going to select a different combination so on this one we're only going to select one of the OCBs so I'm going to tick this one and go OK so it doesn't really matter what combination you make all the switches simply have to have a unique combination and we'll find out why here in a moment so I'm now going to select switch again turn all the values off because I find it easier to start from blank and now we are going to do the final combination so I'm going to select this one and this one and now we're going to go OK and we're going to place down our final trigger so we now have four switches and four unique combinations of code bits and what we're now going to want to do is a little bit of simple binary maths. You may remember me saying that the numbers on the code bits were not important. It was simply their position. And this is because in binary you only have one or zero. You may have gasped in dismay when I mentioned maths. But this is not difficult whatsoever. I'm going to try my best to explain the process. In order to help illustrate this setup, I've created a small table. And this shows us each of the four switches and the OCB values that I have given each one. So, for this setup to work, what we're going to need to do is achieve a total of 1111. So that basically means that all of the code bits are switched on. What we need to take into account for this is the OCB values of the switches that we're going to want to use plus the OCB of the door object and when all these are added together we want to create a total of 11111 which basically means all the code bits are switched on. So if we select our door object and press O to bring up the OCB value for the actual door object you can see here that the door has object code bits and we're going to need to use these object code bits in order to complete the equation. So depending on which combination of switches you want to use to open this door, you need to set the OCB of the door to complete the equation with a total of 11111. So in other words, have all the code bits switched on. I'm a very visual person, so I find it much easier to do the actual sum on paper, as in my opinion it's much easier to work out the values that you'll need if you have all the numbers written out clearly in front of you. I'm going to bring up a simple sum that I did. So this is the first combination that we're going to want to use. So this involves pulling the first, the second and the fourth switches in order to open the door. So we have here the OCB values for the switches that we're going to want to use. So we have switch 1, switch 2 and switch 4. So if we look at these values, what we need to understand here is a bit of simple binary maths. So in binary, if you add a 1 and a 1, it becomes a 0. And if you have just one 1 in the column and the rest are zeros, then the value stays as a 1. However, if you add together three 1s, the value becomes a 1. And that is the basis for these equations. So I'll repeat that. If you have two ones, you add them together to make a zero. If you have just one one, it stays as a one. And if you have three ones, you add them together to make another one. So what you need to do is look at the OCBs for the switches that you want to use and then work out what values you need to put in the door OCB in order to make the final equation 11111. So in this case, we're going to give our door object an OCB value of 10001. So that means turning on the first and the last code bit and then going OK. So what we now need to do is put just a normal trigger for the door on all four of the tiles. We don't need to do any settings in that door trigger, it's just a normal door trigger. So the OCB value goes on the door object itself. If we press O once again, we can see the object code bit values for the door. So, that setup for that door is now complete. When we load up the game, Lara should pull the first, the second and the fourth switches and that door should now open. But 
For this setup, I did say we were going to do two doors, so if we rotate the room around, we will see another door behind us. And assuming for this door, we want to pull a different combination of switches. So you can have any combination you like, it simply has to add up to all the code bits being switched on. So for this door, we're going to use a slightly different combination. For this door, we're going to require Lara to pull the first, the third and the fourth switches in order to open the door. If we bring up our sums again, we can see here the OCB values for those corresponding switch triggers. If we add up the values, we can see which OCB value we're going to need for the door in order to produce a total of 11111. And in this case, this requires the third and the fourth code bits of the door to be pressed. So we're going to do that. Let's select the door and we can select code bits three and four. And once again, we need to put the triggers for that door on all of the switch triggers. So select the door and place a trigger for that door on each of the corresponding switch tiles. And you do need to put it on all of them, not just on the switches you're going to use, as if the wrong switch is pulled, you do not want the door to be able to open. So that is it. That is the multi-switch setup used in Palace Midas. And now if we do an in-game test, we should be able to see this in action. So that is the end of the tutorial, I hope you've enjoyed. So we've covered how to use multiple puzzle items in order to open a single door, and we have also covered how to use multi-switch combinations in order to open multiple doors, similar to the puzzle seen in Palace Midas in Tomb Raider 1. So. This is Agent XP. I hope you've enjoyed, and if you have, please do consider liking and subscribing. And if you do subscribe, please do hit the little notification bell so that you're notified when I upload future videos. Thank you for watching. TTFN.